The universe of available mobile devices is expanding all the time. Commonly known mobile devices include cell phones, tablets, and laptops, but wireless handheld scanners, ebook readers, and wireless headsets and microphones are mobile devices as well. Some mobile devices, like fitness trackers, smartwatches, and medical devices, such as insulin pumps, may be worn on the user's body. Really, what unifies these diverse portable electronic devices, sometimes called PEDs, is that they all store information and they are all capable of wireless connectivity. It is this feature, wireless connectivity, that makes these devices so universally beneficial, but that also makes them uniquely vulnerable to a range of threats. Mobile device security awareness is always important, but it is especially critical in a DoD environment where use may be particularly limited. If you are issued a mobile device from the DOD-controlled inventory, you must sign the End User License Agreement, or EULA, and abide by its terms. DOD-issued devices are provided to support mission accomplishment and not for your personal convenience. Bring Your Own Approved Device Programs, or BYOAD, are currently being studied and fielded. But remember that device and threat technology is changing all the time. Previously permitted devices may no longer be allowed following a change such as an operating system update. Finally, even if you don't have a DOD-issued or DOD-authorized device, as a DOD employee or contractor, you must use extra caution with your personal mobile devices as well. These diverse mobile devices share one key feature. They are all capable of connectivity via wireless radios. You may not think of your smartphone or tablet as a radio, but that is exactly what it is, a device that uses radio frequencies to transmit information. Even when this information is encrypted, however, radio signals are inherently less secure than wired networks. A radio signal can't be placed under a physical lock and key, so once information hits the radio waves, it can be intercepted by anyone. Worse, because an attacker can intercept a radio signal without modifying the device it came from, attacks can occur without users ever even knowing. If you don't understand how your mobile devices work, you may not recognize how easily they can be compromised. There are five main types of radio technology used by mobile devices. Cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Global Positioning System, or GPS, and Near Field Communications, or NFC. Cellular radio is a long-range technology that uses radio frequencies to send and receive calls and data. When using cellular radio, your mobile device broadcasts to the nearest cellular tower in a vast mobile network. The range of cellular radio is limited only by the user's proximity to a cellular tower. Wi-Fi radio is a mid-range wireless local area network, or WLAN. It allows your device to send and receive data using a wireless signal broadcast from a wireless access point or hotspot. Wi-Fi is used for wireless local area networking and typically has a range of about 120 to 300 feet. Bluetooth radio allows your device to communicate with other Bluetooth-enabled devices in the immediate vicinity. For example, you might use your Bluetooth radio to connect your tablet or smartphone to a hands-free headset. Bluetooth is used for short-range personal area networking, or PAN, and typically has a range of 30 feet or less. GPS is a satellite-based geolocation system that provides the positioning information your device uses for tasks like navigation. GPS is a tracking device while active. NFC offers a very short-range connection. It uses magnetic field induction to enable devices to communicate with each other wirelessly over just a few inches. Take a minute to check your knowledge of the different types of radio technologies.
As you saw earlier, wireless radio technologies are a vulnerability that open mobile devices to the threat of potential compromise. But other factors also put mobile devices at risk. Mobile devices are small and portable, and these physical factors make them vulnerable to loss or theft. And mobile devices are also especially vulnerable to malware attacks because of a range of computing factors. Finally, mobile devices, particularly those capable of SMS text messaging, are also highly vulnerable to SMS phishing or smishing attempts and other types of social engineering. Select each mobile device threat to learn more. Wireless information systems are inherently less secure than wired. There are no physical barriers to prevent an attacker from intercepting data, and attacks can occur without the user even knowing. Mobile devices are so useful in part because of their small size and portability. But these physical factors also present a significant vulnerability as mobile devices are very easy to lose or steal. Mobile devices, especially smartphones and tablets, are at risk because of a range of computing factors. Each new generation of devices is increasingly powerful. Modern devices perform many of the functions of a full computer, with large memory storage that holds a great deal of data. But these devices generally have fewer security features than a laptop or personal computer, and this leaves them vulnerable to malware or other malicious applications. Many mobile devices, especially smartphones and tablets, also make heavy use of third-party applications. Without knowing more about those apps, users could easily and unknowingly offer access to sensitive information or download malware onto their device. Mobile devices are also constantly collecting information, from location data to personal browsing histories, even personal health information like activity level or heart rate. Mobile devices are also increasingly interconnected, both to each other and to everyday objects. This growing network of interconnected everyday objects is collectively known as the Internet of Things, or IoT. The IoT includes smart homes, personal wearables, thermostats, cars, lights, refrigerators, and more. This interconnectedness is exciting and useful, but it is also a dangerous vulnerability. If just one device is compromised, it could also compromise your mobile devices and even your entire home network. Mobile devices, particularly those capable of SMS text messaging, are highly vulnerable to smishing attempts and other types of social engineering. Text messages are very easy to mimic and can contain links to hacker sites or executable files. Vishing or voice phishing uses telephones for its attacks, so it is also a concern on mobile devices. Mobile devices also make it easier than ever to volunteer information through social media posts and photo sharing. Remember, your posts can easily be shared with outside parties without your knowledge or consent. And when aggregated, this information may present a cybersecurity risk. Although anyone who uses a mobile device needs to be aware of its inherent risks, some individuals are especially vulnerable. Attackers may specifically target senior leaders and other government employees or contractors with access to sensitive information. These individuals individuals are more likely to have large amounts of sensitive data stored on their devices. Information that might even be more valuable than the device itself. Travelers are also at very high risk. Not only does travel increase the chance that your device will be lost or stolen, but cellular networks in foreign countries are not under U.S. control. Most phones are compromised almost immediately upon arrival in a foreign country. Keep in mind, though, that even though certain types of users may be more vulnerable than others, all users of DoD-provided and DoD-authorized mobile devices 
must operate under the assumption that their devices could come under attack in any place and at any time. Nobody is immune to a mobile attack. Any individual may suffer from identity theft and financial loss if their mobile device is compromised. But when individuals have access to sensitive or classified information, then national security could be endangered as well. Of course, there is the primary risk of a data spill. When information is spilled from a higher classification or protection level to a lower level. But DOD approved mobile device compromise also has the potential to expose additional risks to national security. Mobile devices are filled with personal information like contact lists, photographs, and geolocation data. In the wrong hands, this information could be aggregated to reveal important secrets or be used for phishing, smishing, vishing, and other social engineering attempts. You can see the consequences of mobile device compromise are severe, both to the individual and to the national security. Now take a minute to check your knowledge of mobile device vulnerabilities. Now that you know how vulnerable they are and how important it is to protect mobile devices, what can you do? The most effective protection against attack is not to use mobile devices at all. Think carefully about when and where you use mobile devices and for what purpose. Of course, mobile devices are a big part of our lives and not using them is obviously not always an option. So, when you do use a mobile device, you must be aware of some general security precautions. Remember, only DOD-provided and DOD-approved mobile devices may be used to transmit, receive, store, or process DOD information that has not been cleared for public release. This is especially important for information that has been designated as either classified or controlled unclassified information, or CUI. In addition, only DOD-provided and DOD-approved mobile devices may be connected to either wired or wireless DOD networks or to DOD email systems. When using DOD-issued or approved devices, you must strictly adhere to your local site or organization's mobile device personal use policy and configuration guidance. Personal mobile devices may not connect to DOD wired or wireless networks or store or process CUI or classified data. Note that some DOD locations prohibit personal devices on site altogether. If mobile devices are permitted in your location, you may be allowed to connect your personally owned mobile devices to a guest access WLAN system when authorized by the local site. Because wireless radios are one of the features that make mobile devices so vulnerable, you should know how to recognize which radios are in use and how to disable them when they are not needed. You should always disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS when they're not actively in use. And you should disable all radios anytime your DOD-issued or approved devices are plugged into a wired DOD network. When using wireless features, connect only to authorized access points and follow your organization's policies for proper configuration of wireless security features. Select Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS to see guidelines for the use of each of these wireless radios. If you have a DOD-issued or DOD-authorized mobile device, you may only connect to organizationally authorized wireless access points. Make sure you know what those approved connections are, how to verify your active connections, and the requirements for connecting to your home network. Whether your device is DOD-issued or approved or is a personal device, you should know how to set up a secure Wi-Fi connection. Whether using a DOD-issued or authorized mobile device or your own personal device, you should only connect to devices under your control. Monitor Bluetooth activity and connection requests for unauthorized activity. If you have a DOD-issued or DOD-authorized mobile device, 
you must comply with your organization's policy regarding hands-free systems in vehicles. Pairing your device with a vehicle hands-free system poses the risk that your contact list may be downloaded to the system or uploaded to a cloud service and accessible by the vehicle's mechanics. If you have a DOD-issued or DOD-authorized mobile device, you must disable all GPS location services unless authorized and when authorized, you may only use GPS with approved applications. Also, be sure to disable geotagging of photos. Bring your own approved device or BYOAD programs are currently being studied and fielded. Only some devices will be eligible, and you should be aware of restricted and even potentially malicious vendors. If your device is approved, you must understand the following limitations and guidelines. You must use a strong authentication mechanism, fully encrypt the device, and control device access. You can't let anyone else borrow or use your BYOAD device. You may not modify or jailbreak the device operating system or OS. And you must promptly install all operating system security updates. App use on your BYOAD device is also subject to limitations and guidelines. Finally, if you have a BYOAD device, you must know how to look for indications that your device has been compromised and report any warning signs to your organization's security, POC. You must also report loss or theft of your device, as well as any international travel. When you travel, the device can be unenrolled from the BYOAD program while out of the country. Select BYOAD App Use and Warning Signs to see more. Once enrolled in the BYOAD program, a work container will be installed on your personal mobile device. You may install only approved apps within the work container, and you must be careful not to install any known malicious apps on the personal portion of your device either. For all apps, you must understand how to limit device access, and you should only permit apps to access location data when actively in use. Red flags on your BYOAD device include apps that you did not install, login attempts from foreign locations, and changes to an app's device access requirements. You must report any of these warning signs to your organization's security POC. If you work with classified information, you must be particularly conscious of mobile device use and follow all organizational procedures. Never connect a mobile device to classified networks or information systems. And whether using a cellular radio or a voice over IP application, you may never use a mobile device to discuss either CUI or classified information. No mobile devices, whether personal or DOD issued, are ever permitted inside a sensitive compartmented information facility or SCIF. They may not be permitted in other classified areas either. Finally, if you work with classified information or CUI, you must not set up automatic email forwarding. Data spills can happen easily and unintentionally when classified emails are automatically forwarded. If you have access to sensitive information, are a frequent traveler, or are otherwise particularly vulnerable to an attack on your mobile device, then you need to be highly aware of your surroundings. If your contact list is sensitive, make sure you set your device so that it cannot be viewed when the device is locked. Remember, contact lists could be used to assemble a phishing list. You should also periodically reset your device to its original state. This step may be required depending on your position and organization. Check your organization's procedures to be sure. If you notice any sign of compromise, you must follow your organization's reporting requirements and notify your organization's security POC and your supervisor.
Check your knowledge. Are these statements true or false? Even if you follow these basic guidelines, mobile devices are still vulnerable. Remember, the biggest threats to mobile devices are loss or theft, compromise, malware, and phishing. Also remember that mobile devices are particularly vulnerable to these threats during travel. Do you know how to protect your mobile devices? The following screens will present a series of scenarios. Consider each carefully. What would you do? It's a busy day in the office. You've just wrapped up your first of several long calls and you're about to rush off to a meeting when you glance down at your desk. Take a look. Is there anything you need to do before your meeting? Good call. You must always keep careful track of your mobile devices. Whether you have a DOD-issued or DOD-authorized device or your own personal device, you should never leave it unattended. You should also never place any identifying labels on your device. You do not want to advertise that it belongs to someone who may have access to sensitive materials or contact lists. Your morning meetings have finally wrapped up and you have time for a quick working lunch. You settle in at the cafe and open your laptop to check your email when you see free Wi-Fi is available. What do you do next? Good move. Mobile devices are especially vulnerable when used on unsecured mobile networks. Remember, though, even secure networks pose a risk of compromise. Hacking tools like high-gain directional antennas can remotely detect the location of mobile devices, intercept inbound and outbound communications, collect data packets from radio waves, and decrypt encrypted communications. Remember also that text messaging services are never secure or encrypted. To protect your device against compromise, you should use strong passwords and change them regularly. Many organizations require that you change them as frequently as every 90 days. To access your DOD-issued laptop, always use a password, common access card or CAC, and personal identification number or PIN. Cell phones, smartphones, and tablets must require strong passwords for access. Finally, you must encrypt CUI data and only store CUI data on a mobile device when absolutely necessary. When you get back to your desk after lunch, you find a surprise. A co-worker has left a cute little Bluetooth speaker for you. Would you like to try it out? You're right to be cautious. When connected to a DoD system, mobile devices can easily be used to introduce malicious code or other malware onto a computer or network. And malware can easily be inserted onto a mobile device at any point during the manufacturing chain or following compromise. You need to be especially careful of malicious apps. These are a specialized form of malware that may come from a respected source. On a mobile device, they can steal or corrupt data, send out spam, monitor online activity, install viruses or malware, capture usernames and passwords, and even access cameras and microphones. To protect against malware on your DoD-issued or authorized device, only download, update, and use apps authorized for your device by the DoD Mobility Program Management Office, or PMO. The Mobile Application Store, or MASS, for your device contains a list of the authorized apps. Some mobile devices automatically update apps as new versions are released. Make sure your device does not have this setting enabled. You should never open links or attachments from unknown sources or connect unauthorized devices to DoD computers. Check with your organization for a list of authorized devices and correct usage guidelines. 
Follow your organization's mobile device personal use policy for guidelines on personal use of your DOD-provided or DOD-authorized device for such things as commercial apps or personal email. For example, you may not be authorized to add third-party email accounts or sync contacts and calendar events with public applications such as Google. Oh, it looks like you just got a text from a number you don't recognize. It says it's from your wireless provider. Should you select the link? Good thinking. You should never open messages or links from unknown senders. Doing so could very easily allow a hacker to access your device. SMS phishing or smishing attempts may mimic expected messages, for example, a welcome message upon arrival in a new country, or a message that appears to be from a known entity. But these texts could contain links to hacker sites or executable files. In addition, never use text messages to send sensitive information. Remember, text messages are not encrypted. Your busy day is over, but early tomorrow you're heading to the airport. You have a trip abroad for an international conference. You are leaving your DoD-issued laptop secured at home, but you need to decide whether to bring your DoD-approved smartphone. What should you do? Good call. Cellular networks in foreign countries are not under U.S. control. Most phones are compromised almost immediately upon arrival in a foreign country. Whenever you can, you should leave your mobile devices at home and purchase a prepaid phone for use in a foreign country. You could also consider purchasing a prepaid SIM card for use on your personal device. While traveling, avoid using public or hotel hotspots, just as you would at home. If you must connect, make sure you use a virtual private network or VPN. Avoid using GPS as it can be used as a tracking feature and reveal your location. And of course, consult your organization's policy. Taking mobile devices abroad may be prohibited. Remember, mobile devices may be a regular part of our lives, but many of the features that make them so useful and convenient also leave them vulnerable. These risks can be managed, however, if you know what makes your mobile devices vulnerable and what you can do to protect them. Now that you have completed this course, you should be able to recognize various types of mobile devices and wireless radio technologies, Recognize specific vulnerabilities associated with unclassified mobile devices. Identify which personal mobile devices may be used in a government setting and under what conditions. And identify methods of protecting unclassified government-provided and government-authorized mobile devices. Congratulations! You have completed the course. Using mobile devices in a DoD environment. Cyber.mil for this and other training resources. You may now exit the course.